Some of the things Mr. Shove taught me starting at age 25, some things came quickly, some things came easily. Setting goals, that was easy. We're going to talk about that uh, later on. But this one I had to struggle with, personal development. It was hard for me to give up my old blame list. It was so comfortable blaming the government and blaming my negative relatives and the company, company policy, unions, wage scale, economy, interest rates, prices and circumstances and all that. That was difficult for me to give up. That was quite a transition for me to make and blaming myself. But Mr. Shove started out with something very, very important. Let me give that to you. He said, it's not what happens that determines the major part of your future. It's not what happens. What happens, happens to us all. He said, the key is what you do about it. It's not what happens, it's what you do about it. And he said, if you will start that process of change, do something different the next 90 days than you did the last 90 days, like picking up the books to read, do something different like the new health disciplines, relationship with your family, whatever it is, doesn't matter how small it is. If you'll start doing different things with the same circumstances, since we cannot change the circumstances, but we can change ourselves. We can change what we do. And then he gave me another secret to success when he said, what you have at the moment, Mr. Rohn, you've attracted by the person you've become. What you have at the moment, you've attracted by the person you've become. Few little simple principles here. Once you understand these, it starts to explain so much. Now, sometimes it's a little tough to take, blaming yourself instead of the marketplace, taking responsibility instead of putting it off on someone else. Those, that transition sometimes is a challenging mission. And this one was a little tough for me. He said, Mr. Owen, you've got pennies in your pocket. You've got nothing in the bank. The creditors are calling. You're behind on your promises. And he says, here's how that occurs. You've attracted, up until now, you've attracted the things to you because of the person you've become. Now I said, well, how can I change all that? He said, very simple. If you will change, everything will change for you. You don't have to change what's outside. All you've got to change is what's inside. To have more, you simply have to become more. And then he said, don't wish it was easier. Wish you were better. Don't wish for less problems. Wish for more skills. Start working on yourself, making these personal changes. And he said, it'll all change for you. So let's talk a little bit about personal development. That extraordinary adventure I undertook starting at age... 25. And I've never ceased that adventure. I'm still going for it in the 90s. I want to get better and better. I want my craft to get better, my business operations to get better, the things I do to get better. Because once I picked up this simple formula, I'm telling you it's easy to figure out where the problem is if you go to work on it. Now, let's talk about personal development. And in helping kids understand personal development, I always start with money. Now, money's not the only place to start. Money certainly isn't the only value, but we've all got to start somewhere, and money's something you can count, right? Kids are interested in money, okay? A lot of things are a little tougher to measure, but economics is pretty easy, right? Because you can count, okay? Somebody says, how are you doing? You say, I don't know, let's count. Now, this is not the only count. I understand that. There's a lot of other things to count. But to see if there may be some errors in your judgment and lack of disciplines in your life, we might as well start with money because it's so easy to count. So let's just start there and see whether or not maybe we have messed up. Okay. So here's how I explain it to kids. We get paid for bringing value to the marketplace. Key to understanding economics. We get paid for bringing value to the marketplace. Marketplace is also described as reality. Reality, the marketplace. Now, it takes time. It takes time to bring value to the marketplace, but we don't get paid for time. 
It's very important for kids to understand, as well as adults. We don't get paid for time. Mistakenly, the man says, well, I'm making about $20 for an hour. Not true. Not true. If that was true, you could just stay home, have them send your money. No, it's not true. You don't get paid for the hour. You get paid for the value you put in the time. So we don't get paid for time, we get paid for value. Now, since that's true, here's one of the key questions of the afternoon. Is it possible to become twice as valuable and make twice as much money in the same time? Is it possible to become three times as valuable as you now are and make three times as much money in the same time? Is that possible? Of course. If you want to really emphasize something, that's a good phrase to it. Of course. Of course. Okay. Now, all you have to do to earn more money in the same time is simply become more valuable. America is unique. It's a ladder to climb. Starts down here, what? About $4 an hour? Big argument last year in Congress about the starting place. Should be five, should be five, should be five. Well, no, it doesn't need to be five. Why not start with four? It's a ladder. Right, this is not a bed. This is a ladder. It's a ladder to climb. Starts at four dollars. Now somebody says, well, should be five, should be five. Well, maybe. If you're gonna stay at the bottom for the rest of your life, it probably should be five. But that's kind of a pitiful way to live. Start and not grow. Start and not change. Start and not become more valuable. Hey, the whole scenario of life is to start, number one, and what? Become more valuable, number two. So America is a ladder to climb. Starts at $4 an hour, and the more valuable you become, you just keep moving up the ladder. Top income last year, what, 52 million? Guy that runs Disney? Would a company pay somebody for one year's work $52 million? And the answer is, of course. This is one of those of course places. Of course. If you help a company make a billion dollars, would they pay you 52 million? The answer is, of course, it's chicken feed. I mean, it's not much money. Now, why that much money? Because he has become so valuable. Now, why would we pay somebody only $4 an hour? They're not very valuable to the marketplace. Now, we gotta make that distinction to the marketplace. Might be a valuable brother, a valuable member of the community, valuable member of the church, valuable member in the sight of God, to the human family, of course, those kind of values. But to the marketplace, which is called what? Reality. Reality is, if you're not very valuable, you don't get much money. Those are called the facts. I mean, that's how that is. Well, then how do you get more money? Simple answer. Somebody says, well, I'll go on strike for more. Well, here's a major problem with that. Here's a major problem with that. You can't get rich by demand. Somebody says, well, I'm waiting for a raise. I'm telling you it's easier to climb than to wait for a raise. Why not just become more valuable rather than wait? I'm telling you that's the key to all good things. Becoming more valuable. Why would we pay somebody $400 an hour? They've become more valuable to the marketplace. See how this works? I'm telling you this stuff is so easy. This is America. This is a ladder. How far is it from four to five? I'm telling you, it's not far. Four to five dollars an hour? If you work for McDonald's, haul out the trash, they'll pay you five dollars an hour. If you whistle while you haul out the trash, they'll pay you five dollars an hour, I'm telling you. You'll get an extra dollar just for a good attitude. Yay, McDonald's. Wear the hat. It's incredible. Five dollars. And then you just keep becoming more valuable, more valuable, more valuable. 
I got a telephone call five years ago. The company said, we're ready to expand internationally. We need some help. I was sort of semi-retired, right? Looking for the next exotic beach. They said, no, no, Mr. Rohn, we got a project for you, right? We're going to expand internationally. We could use your help. Next little while, we'll add a some millions to your fortune, make it worth your while. I said, okay. <laughs> I thought later, isn't that interesting that they called me? My second thought was, of course they'd call me. Who else would they call? I mean, you know, <laughs> I can get the job done. Now, how come, how come I got a telephone call worth millions? I had become valuable. Now, I'm a farm boy from Idaho. I was raised in obscurity. One year of college, and I thought I was thoroughly educated. Made all kinds of mistakes galore. At age 25, the creditors are calling me saying, hey, you told us the check was in the mail. I got pennies in my pocket. I got nothing in the bank. I'm behind on my promises. How come I get a telephone call five years ago and it's worth millions? I changed. I changed. I turned my life around. Is it possible to become worth millions? Speaking economically, now there's a lot of values to become, but let's just talk economics. Is it possible to become that valuable? And the answer is, of course, of course. Now let me give you the secret. Show said, here's the secret, Mr. Rohn. Learn to work harder on yourself than you do on your job. Once I got that, it turned my life around. Learn to work harder on yourself than you do on your job. He said, if you work hard on your job, you'll make a living. If you work hard on yourself, you can make a fortune. If you would have known me at age 25, you would have said, Jim Rohn's a hard worker. If you'd have known me, you'd have said that. I'm the guy, I don't mind coming a little bit early, staying a little bit late, I don't mind that. You'd have said, well, Jim Rohn's a hard worker. You say, well, how come he's got pennies in his pocket and nothing in the bank and behind on his promises? Well, I was a hard worker, but I was working hard on my job, not on my cell. I'm telling you, if you'll learn that simple little principle and start the process today, latest tomorrow, I'll give you tonight to think it over. <laughs> and start this whole process of personal development, work on yourself, Make yourself more valuable to the marketplace. I'm telling you, you can so dynamically change your income. And economics is the least of the values that you can start earning in terms of equity. If you'll start working harder on yourself than you do on your job. Work hard on yourself and develop the skills. Work hard on yourself and develop the graces. All of the stuff necessary to become more valuable to the marketplace. I'm telling you, your whole life can explode into change. Promotions, no problem. Becoming more valuable to the company, I'm telling you, no problem. Money, no problem. Economics, no problem. Future, no problem. If you just go to work on the right thing. Not get things out there to change. Don't try to change the seed. Don't change the soil. Don't change the sunshine. Don't change the rain. Don't change the mix of seasons. Let the miracle of everything that's available work for you and start working on the inside. Work on your philosophy, work on your attitude. Work on your personality, work on your language, work on the gift of communication, work on all of your abilities. And if you'll start making those personal changes, I'm telling you, everything will change for you. One of the most important habits you can develop is the habit of daily goal setting. Countless people I have taught this to over the years have told me that the power of this process is absolutely incredible. I know because I use it myself every day. Now daily goal setting is quite simple. Get yourself a spiral notebook, like a school notebook, to write your goals in and resolve to keep it nearby for the rest of your life. Each morning before you start out, open your spiral notebook and start a new page without referring to the old page. And always begin with the words, my goals are the following, colon. You then write down your top 10 to 15 goals in the present tense as though you have already achieved them. For example, you would not say, I earn or I will earn this amount of money. You say, I earn this amount of money by this date. I drive this car. I weigh this amount and so on. Your subconscious mind is only activated by commands that are stated in the present positive personal tense. 
So again, instead of writing a goal such as, I am going to lose weight in the months ahead, you would write, I weigh X number of pounds by a certain date. Instead of saying, I will earn more money over the next year, you would say, I earn X number of dollars by such and such a date. The more specific you can be in terms of what you want and when you want to achieve it, expressed in the positive present tense, and beginning with the word I, the more powerful the effect will be on your subconscious mind. Goals written and stated in this way activate the laws of expectation and the law of attraction. They cause you to develop new beliefs about what is possible for you. They also activate the laws of emotion and correspondence. They increase your energy and stimulate your creativity. Positive, personal, present tense goals written down repeatedly each day activate your subconscious and superconscious minds and step on the accelerator of your own potential. As a result, you start to move more rapidly toward the achievement of your goals and they begin to move more rapidly toward you. One of the most powerful ways to achieve the financial goals you set for yourself is to use your powers of visualization. This means seeing yourself actually doing the things that you would be doing to achieve your goals. Visualization activates your superconscious capabilities and releases your mental potential. You'll actually begin to receive a steady flow of ideas and energy for goal attainment. The clearer the picture is in your mind, the more rapidly your subconscious and superconscious go to work to bring it into your reality. There are four factors that determine how rapidly your visualization, your mental picture, turns into realization. The first is the length of the visualization. How long can you hold the picture of what you want in your mind? The second is the frequency of the visualization. How often do you hold that picture in your mind throughout the day? The third factor is the intensity of the visualization. How much emotion is connected to the picture that you are holding in your mind? And the fourth factor that determines the speed with which your visualization comes into true, your reality is the vividness of the visualization. How clear is your mental picture? You will find that you can increase the speed at which you realize your goal by working in one or more of these areas. You can either increase the length of the visualization, holding the picture longer, or you can increase the frequency by visualizing your goal more often through the day. You can increase the intensity of the mental picture by generating more emotion to go with it, or you can increase the clarity of the vividness of the picture. The best way is to practice all four. Play and replay the picture of your goals on the screen of your mind. The more you visualize and see your goal as a reality, the more intensely you will desire your goal. The more you want it, the less you will fear failure and rejection and the possible losses that may go along with the pursuit of your goal. Creative visualization deepens your belief that your goals are attainable. It increases your self-confidence. It strengthens your courage and builds your faith in yourself. The more often you replay the picture of your desired future in your mind, the more unstoppable you become. Thank you for viewing this video on how to use your powers of visualization to achieve financial freedom. If you enjoyed this video, please press the like button below and subscribe to my channel by clicking on the link on the screen. that sense of wealth, that sense of abundance in you, the more you can feel that sense of joy, the more easy it's going to be for you to do financially because you're not going to be in this scarce, fearful mode. Now, that's not enough by itself. You can have this great sense of abundance and do the wrong mechanics and be a disaster, true or false. But if I had to have an area to get you started with, 
you want to have the emotion and psychological strength because that's going to carry you through when the mechanics are boring or frustrating or when things aren't working out. Your emotion, your psychology is what will carry you. It will get you to keep doing it. Everyone knows, if you've done any studies, Dr. Seligman is very famous for doing studies on optimism. And in those studies, you know what he found out? People that are pessimists are much more realistic. They're much more accurate. If you give them a test and you ask them to look at something and give you a size measurement of it or to evaluate their own success or failure in a task, and every study Seligman's done, he did it in the University of, I think, Pennsylvania, if I remember correctly, originally, what he found was that optimists always see themselves as doing better than they really did. They basically BS themselves. What happens to pessimists, they're ten times more accurate. But here's what he found out. What he found out is because the people who are accurate never push themselves because they know it's never going to work anyway. Whereas the optimist sees it better than it is, so they keep doing it. Because they have the illusion they did well, well, I'll do even better next time. And because of that optimism, they did it more often, and so optimists succeed at a four to five fold, depending upon the task, result ultimately beyond anything that a pessimist will do, and they're not as accurate. All that's a big way of saying is, if you can develop a psychology of resilience in yourself, you don't have to be optimistic or fake, you can be real. The realness is, whatever shows up, you are larger than anything that can happen to you. You are larger than any financial challenge you could ever face. Initially, we'll say, well, look at their houses, look at their homes, and they don't really have electricity, they don't have this, but they don't feel poor. It's your identity, the way you define the wealth, determines whether you're wealthy or not. So are there enough things for you, knowing that two-thirds of the planet lives on $2 a day, that you could get yourself to really feel grateful, yes or no? Yes. How much of your life do you get benefits from today that you never had to create? Think about it. Like I said, the road you ride on, the library, the books you didn't have to write, right? the internet that you can access in seconds and get answers to just about anything, the people in your life that you didn't have to raise but are there for you, Think about all the different aspects of your life. If you want to be wealthy, all you have to do is associate. So before we do the financial part, because financial independence is different than wealth. Wealth is that state of mind. Financial independence is being in that position where you don't ever have to work again. That if you work, you do it because you really want to. Now, I'll give you a clue. If you get financially independent and you don't work, you'll be miserable. I can't tell you how many friends I have that sold their company, made $50 million. One man made almost a billion dollars and was really excited for a while, but after a while, it was like bored. His vehicle of his business gave him a sense of contribution, and he was always growing, figuring out how to solve problems, and he had all the people he was connected to in the business, all the employees and friends and associates. So I want to tell you, I'm not just saying this as some little positive thinking technique. I'm telling you, this is the secret, the real secret, to shift it inside of you and to add the real value. Most people are trying to pursue something in the future that they already have. I want you to think of what it is you think you want that will make you wealthy or financially free. By defining the game in a winnable way, a certain amount of money that we meet, and that covers what we're going to call financial security, which might be your housing, your cars, your food, and basic entertainment. How many would feel rich if you didn't have to work, if your investments alone, the income from your investments, the income, covered those four items, your housing for the rest of your life, your food, right, your travel and some entertainment, how many think that would feel pretty good? Say I. And by the way, that number is way smaller than what most of you think of when you think about being financially independent, which is everything covered without working. So why not get the first one down, Pat? And you're going to know exactly what that number is for you and what it's going to take for that number where you don't have to work to meet it. Then we can look at financial independence where you don't have to work and everything is covered. Then we go to financial freedom. You don't have to work, and everything you can think of is covered. <laughs> Anything you ever want to do for yourself or others, those you want to give. That's a different level, isn't it? And most people think of financial freedom, they come up with this gigantic number that if you even figured out everything you want, it's nowhere near as big as you think. And because it's so big, you never even start the journey. And you don't think it's going to happen. So you talk about it, you hope you'll get some big hit sometime with your business or something, but you never get going. How many follow this? Say I. If you are significant in other people's eyes, what will that do for you? Well, you know, it was in my eyes. Somebody that I would look, somebody that, but when you know, you an get, example. But when you get there, you won't look to yourself anymore. When you get there, 
you'll just be at a different level and then you'll be trying to figure some other level of what you need to get to so you would respect yourself. That's a good point. <laughs> he always makes good points, you notice that? <laughs> so what you're doing is, here's the game you're playing, and I want all of you to hear this. No amount of money will ever make you wealthy because as soon as you get there, you will raise the game. Now here's what's great about that, to continue growing in all areas of life. If you could grow emotionally, should you, yes or no? Yes. If you could give more, should you, yes or no? Yes. If you grow intellectually, should you? Yes. If you could give more love, should you? Yes. If you could grow more financially, should you? Yes. yes, because growth is life. But having to grow in order to feel significant enough means you will always be poor. It's a game that never ends. Let's talk about money now, not wealth. What does it take mechanically to get this thing called financial independence? And what is financial independence as opposed to wealth? Wealth is a product of the mind. Again, no amount of money you ever achieve will make you wealthy. Financial independence means you never have to work again in order to live your life. That when you do work, you're doing it because you really want to, not because you have to. How many are committed to not only being wealthy, but also financially independent? Say, ah! How do we get there? Let me give you the lesson how to get there. It is so simple that when I tell you, you're gonna go, oh, thank you for the breakthrough thought. <laughs> but even though you may know this intellectually, whether you're sophisticated or not, you probably know this. The formula for financial independence is so simple. And you can't achieve financial abundance unless you really learn to apply this, not just in a concept in your head, but consistently in your life. And that formula is simple. Spend less than you what? You go, oh, thank you for the breakthrough thought, Tony. But is this what most people do, yes or no? No, what do most people spend? More than they earn. There's no way around this. No matter how much money you have, if you spend more than you earn, you've got a challenge. So there's no way to be financially free, financially independent without spending less than you earn. And what do you got to do with what you don't spend? You got to invest the difference. Because what I want to show you right now is how do you build what everybody should own. Every one of you should leave here with your own personal money machine. You want to create a money machine, a machine that while you're sleeping is making you money, right? So you're no longer trading the most valuable resource you have in life, your time for money. You want to trade money for money. You want money to go to work. You want to put that money to work for you so while you're sleeping it's making a difference. You want to create a machine and that machine you want to create is something that you want to be able to feed you at some stage where you don't have to work. That's what the money machine is. The second secret to this is you got to reinvest. How many of you have ever made a big hit in your investments and went, oh my God, that's so cool, and took the money and spent it on something? Raise your hand, say I. Come on, say I. I know you all, anybody who's invested has done this. If you got a big hit, you go, oh, this is it. Nothing wrong with that, but you gotta make sure a significant amount of that, you reinvest your returns so you get compounded what? Compounded growth is the most basic principle in the world. We all know it intellectually. But are you emotionally associated enough that you're really utilizing it to its maximum capability? If you don't, you're not gonna get financially free. You will never get financially independent by your earnings alone. Every one of you in this room is gonna lose money. Every one of you, there's no way. The person I work with, one of the top financial traders in the history of the world, top 10 in the history of the world, is not even right half the time. How could you make billions of dollars if you're not even right half the time? Not even 51% of the time. I'm gonna show you in a few moments. It's known as asset allocation. It's the way you invest, it's what you do. That's what's gonna shift this. So first step, spend less than you earn, invest the difference. Second step, reinvest it so you get compounded growth until you reach the home run, your money machine, until you reach a critical mass, a critical mass of capital, of investment capital. When you get to that critical mass, and what determines the critical mass is how much you need for the lifestyle that you want, once you get that critical mass, what it provides for you is what you're investing for. Who knows, no matter what investment you're doing, what are you really investing for? Whether you're investing in cars, stocks, bonds, real estate, financial instruments, what are you investing for? You're not, for, you're not investing for returns. That illusion will keep you from getting to the end game. If you're wealthy, here's what makes you wealthy. Income, not assets. Assets you can buy, and assets change in value all the time. You need income. This is the only reason to invest. You invest for one reason, so you have an income for life without working.
And to do that, you gotta build a critical mass of capital that the interest on it alone will give you that income and you can have the life you want without working. And the only way to do that is do those first two steps. Spend less than you earn, invest it, reinvest it till you hit that critical mass. Now, how to do that is actually a lot simpler than you think. We make things more complex than it really is. You gotta think of this as your target. In order to achieve what you want, where you have a money machine, here's what you must do. You must pick out a minimum financial goal for yourself. Even to achieve your minimum financial goal, you gotta pick out a specific amount of money that you're gonna invest every month, every year, no matter what. A specific percentage of your income. If you don't do that, forget the rest of this course. It's a waste of your time. Because you'll go make a bunch of money, but you won't be practicing the fundamentals, and eventually you'll make a mistake and you'll lose it. <laughs> Let me tell you another secret to life. If you do the right thing at the wrong time, you get pain. <laughs> if you plant in the winter, I don't care how hard you work. I don't care if you work day and night and you work to the bone and you plant your seeds in the middle of the winter. What's going to happen when fall comes? Are you going to be rewarded, yes or no? No. So if you don't understand that the seasons are changing, you're in trouble. What is asset allocation? It means out of the money you have to invest, we're going to create three buckets. Really simple way of thinking of this from now on. The first bucket is the security bucket. When you think about investing, think of two types of investments. There are fixed income investments, and most of you are clear what this means. What does it mean when it's a fixed income investment? Who knows? What does that mean? You've got a guaranteed rate of return, assuming they deliver. And anyone cannot deliver, including the U.S. government. They haven't not delivered, but they could. Is there risk in any investment, yes or no? So just ratios of risk. And as we know, you know, no risk, no no reward. So if you don't invest, you're going to lose if you invest the times. But if you don't invest, you've already lost and you can never win, never have a money machine, never be financially free. The second type of investment that you can make and it helps you understand what you're going to do is something that's going to be growth driven. And growth investments are investments where you probably have a much greater potential for growth, which means you get a greater return if you're successful. But if you're not successful, do you have a guaranteed rate of return? Yes or no? No. So in a growth investment, you have the potential of greater return, but also greater greater loss. The security bucket is where you want to put investments that are secure by their nature. Because they're secure, is this going to give you a huge compounded return per year? Yes or no? no. But can it give you a huge compounded return even if the number is small if you do it long enough? Yes or no? Yes. So what we want to do is your first investments have to be in your security bucket and everybody wants to do the opposite. Okay. The question then becomes what percentage you put in your security bucket, what goes in there? Well, here's some things that go in there. If you don't have at least two to six months worth of cash that covers your overhead, you're in deep trouble. The first step to getting financially secure, not financially independent, is to make sure you got enough cash that if something happens, you can go for six months. You got the freedom. What else might you put in there? Types of investments. An IRA goes in here, right? Pretty secure. Insurance. The insurance is protecting you. That's part of security. What else could go in there? Your home. Don't think of your home as an investment. Because for most of you, you're eventually not going to sell that home and eat it. You're not going to sell your home and get income off it. Now, some of you may be. You made a stage of life where you're accumulating the same homes, and eventually you're going to sell and buy a smaller home and take that critical mass that came from selling the big home, and it's going to take care of you for life. If you're doing that, great. But the place to think about your home in terms of leverage, put it in your security bucket. How many agree with me on this, by the way? Say I. Because, by the way, if you don't have a home, you're going to be really stressed out. Right? So I've got to think of my growth outside my home, really. Think of your compound interest outside your home. Your home may be a bonus for you. And fixed income investments often in this category. Now, what's the second bucket? Second bucket is growth. Two ways you're going to learn about growth. The buy and hold strategy, which is the strategy of an owner. And by the way, that buying and holding, that is less risky to some extent than momentum because of the timing. But it can be just as risky. What is momentum trading? That's when you're no longer an owner, you're a trader. A financial trader, everybody's a financial trader. Most of you are trading time for your money. Here you're trading money for money.